Maybe Mike needs the van. I'll go to Robert on foot. Tourist rubbish. And not at all cheap. Robert, it's me. Robert, it's me. God, you look terrible. Are you unwell? Ah, Catherine. Uh, it's nice that you came over. What's wrong with you? You're really pale, and you've lost weight. Yeah, well, uh, an old chap like me can afford to lose a few stone, eh? Have you been ill? You should have told me. I could have cooked for you. No, no, I I'm fine. I'm just not sleeping very well. You worry too much. You didn't call on my birthday either. Oh, no. What day is it today? Wednesday, the 1st of July. My birthday. Oh, dear, oh, dear. I'm getting old. Come here. All the best for the smartest, best, most talented girl in the world. Or at least in town. Or at least in this studio. I haven't got anything for you. Yeah, you have. We've got a job. You've got a week to do the copy. Can you manage it? A week? I hope it's at least something a bit challenging. I wouldn't get too excited. I've got it with me. Wait. This projector still work? If it doesn't, uh, give it a bang. I don't know why. Because that always helps? Oh, dear. They're all long overdue. What a mess. Everything's falling apart. He really isn't doing too good. A Michelangelo. Robert's projector. He uses it to project the original for the preliminary drawing. So this is it. Good old Churchill. Can you do that in a week? Hmm. Who the hell wants this amateur crap? Some insane collector. I was a bit surprised myself. He sent along a rather mysterious middleman. I could paint that blindfolded. Any old street painter can do this inane portrait realism. But not to such a standard that it's good enough for a museum. Only you can do that. The original is just as out of place in a museum as the copy would be. It's inferior. Now, don't tell me he's going to pay for this. You could say that. He'll give us five million. Five million pounds for this? <laughs> What's happened to the art market? It certainly hasn't become more rational. All the better for us. Robert? You really aren't looking good. Come on, tell me. What's wrong? Hmm, what's wrong? I, I told you, I I'm not sleeping well. Are you depressed? Alone? Lonely? No. More the opposite. Listen, Catherine, I I'm going to tell you something, but you mustn't make fun of me, you hear? I promise. There's someone here. What? What do you mean? Who is it? Not now. Not when I'm here. There's someone here. In my studio. I can see it in little details. I'm not alone here. Come on. That's nonsense. Who'd break into your studio? Is anything missing? No. Nothing. But I can feel it. Someone comes in when I'm not here. When I come back, a cloth is lying a, a millimeter to the left, or a book is open at another page, or a canvas is leaning at a, a slightly different angle against the wall. No, rubbish. You're imagining it. You see? You're making fun of me. You, you think I'm mad, right? That... no. No, not at all. It's terrible if you're scared. I only... I only wanted to reassure you. You're probably mistaken. That's what I wanted to say. Shall we get you anything? 
Do you need paints or canvas? I've still got the key for the faculty. I'll have a look in the storeroom later. Hmm, we'd better buy that stuff. They'll realize if something goes missing. The new Chancellor has got every single pencil itemized. Uh, not in the storeroom. I spoke to Dawson and Trevor. They don't touch the storeroom. They say that the old stuff from before 2005 is worthless. It doesn't even exist according to the new inventory. They'll be throwing it all out. Throwing it away? Everything? The paintings from past students? You're not serious. Shall I have a look to see if there are still some of your works in there? The picture of my father. Perhaps that's still lying around. <laughs> you want that back? He called today. Gosh. And, uh, what did he say? I didn't pick up. He said... He said all the best for your birthday. Hmm. <laughs> That's more than I said. Are you going to call back? I don't know. Where's the painting of Jessica? It was always back there in the corner. I... burned it. You did what? I couldn't stand her looking at me anymore. Her eyes changed over the years. She looked at me like a stranger. But it was just a picture. Exactly. That's why I burned it. I don't need that stare. I want to keep Jessica in my memories. Just like I knew her. Robert, that painting looked like it always did. You should know better, Catherine. Perception is in the eye of the beholder. Jessica didn't change. I changed. That's what I saw in her eyes. And that's what I didn't want to see anymore. The painting didn't become alien to me. I became alien to the painting. I'm worried about you. Won't you come round for dinner tonight? Ah, oh, don't worry. I've got some soup from yesterday. You can't live on that. <laughs> but you can't die from it either. I'll be fine. Listen, I've got to go. You really won't come over for some dinner? I'd rather do some work. Okay. Then take care, all right? Look after yourself. I'll be in touch. Hey. Hey, so what did McBride say? Is he gonna do it? Yes, but he isn't well. I told you, he's slowly reaching that age. You should know. He burned the painting of Jessica. Seriously? He says he's changed. He can't stand seeing the picture anymore. He also thinks he's being followed. He said that when he's not there, people go snooping around in his studio. Ah, oh, heck. So he really has changed. He's gone all paranoid then. Or could there be some truth in it? Has he got any evidence? He said he knows that it's true. He can see it in certain details. Hmm. Well, that doesn't sound good at all. If he's right, we've got a serious problem. We've got a problem, Mike, because he's unwell. He's our friend. We've got to help him. Okay, okay, but how? I've never been particularly pally with him. You're his favorite. Tell us what we can do for the old boy and we'll do it. I'll do it. That's nice of you. Take the rubbish out with you, okay? Weren't you gonna do that? Hey, I had things to do. The London Museum plan. Forgotten already? And? Have you got it? Ha! What do you think? Of course. Not! But I know where we can get it. The building was designed by the architects Wilbur and Thompson. I've already been on their server. But? Yeah, well, the server has some teeny-weeny security features. Nothing serious, but it's gonna take me the whole day to crack it. Okay, then we'll go to the museum tomorrow and have a look around. Okay, off we go. Jack Stern, haven't got time now. Goodbye. Stop. Oh, Chief. <laughs> hey, Chief, how's it going? Sorry, I, I, I didn't see it was you. What can I do for you? Jack, how long have you been working for us? Oh, come on, Chief. I'm sorry. My phone's ringing all day. I just wanted to, uh... How long? Eleven years. And do you want to continue working for us? Yes, Chief. Then don't hang up again before I tell you to. No, Chief. Good. 
I'll be sending you a file soon. Death of a member of the British government. The security threat level's been increased. You'll be checking whether this thing has any relevance to our security. You read the files, travel to London, have a look at this thing, and then write a report immediately. Questions? No, Chief. Then fine. Now, you may hang up. Thanks, Chief. Knucklehead. My apartment. I've been hoping for years that this place would burn down. I said that they ought to put cacti in the offices. And I just love headaches. I urgently ought to sort my mail out. I've given up giving it up. Susan's father gave it to me as a wedding present, and then after the divorce, he wanted it back, the old tight ass. My badge. Hey, that's my passport. Here in the case is another special little tool. My bump key, very useful. Works rather faster than a search warrant. Fraser's old computer? <laughs> The chief loves me. Okay, then I'll give the ladies and gentlemen a call. MI5, Special Agent Jordan Bellico. Jack Stern, International Police, Washington. Hi, Jordan. So, how's the weather over there? It's raining. Do you know how late it is here, Mr. Stern? Yeah, of course. I'm not disturbing you, am I? I assume you're calling about the Henston case. Your boss gave me advance warning. Exactly, I know. It's a real whodunit. We'd like to get an idea of this thing at first hand. Our whole department has been working non-stop for the past 48 hours. I'm on my way home. I've just come from the pathologist. Okay. I'll keep it short. I plan to fly out today. I'd be there tomorrow morning. Does that suit you? Not particularly, but it can be organized. And can you arrange a set of wheels for me? What do you have in mind? A van would be good, one of those surveillance vans. Hmm, that's doable. Any particular features or fittings? If you had a sleeping bag? Sure. And perhaps a steering wheel on the right side? <laughs> the steering wheel is on the right side. British sense of humor, huh? Very good. Uh, so I'm flying to London Central, and then I'll come out to you. No one will be able to pick you up. We'll park your van in the airport car park and leave the key for you at the check-in. I'll send you an email with the password soon. You have my mobile number, just in case. Wonderful. Then good night. See you tomorrow. Hmm. Okay. United Airways booking office. Jack Stern, International Police, Washington. I have a business account with you. Yes, Mr. Stern. I found you. What can I do for you? I need a seat on the next plane to London. That will be the direct flight at 2.30 p.m., sir. Business class? Definitely. And give me a seat next to the aisle. And a parachute. Aisle seat, sir. I've made a note of that. That will be $2,500. Where should I send your e-ticket? Send it to my email address. The ticket's on its way. Please be at the check-in in Terminal 2, no later than 2 p.m. United Airways wishes you a pleasant flight. Thanks. Okay, I've printed the ticket out. Good, so I'll pack up now and get out of here. All right, then. I 
just come up from there? Darn confusing here. Hello. My name's Jack Stern. You have a message for me? Your passport, please, sir. Sure. Thank you very much. The password for receiving the message, please. Password? Oh, yes. Uh, one moment. The password is 53 Alpha 2 Lima Whiskey 5. Thank you, sir. This key was left for you. Well then. Have a nice day, sir. Hmm. I just can't get the autopsy report off my mind. Puzzling. So the doctors don't have a clue either. Who would have had a motive? He must have had enemies for sure. I'm gonna ask Bellico. Maybe I should do a search on the web for Henston at the same time. I ought to have internet access in the van. That must be it. Not bad. Okay. Attractive. And so roomy. Right. Welcome home. Okay, fine. The computer's there, too. Right. Mr. Bellico. Is that him? It has to be him. Hi, you must be Jordan, right? Jack Stern, it's a pleasure. Did you have a pleasant flight? Yeah, well, I don't really like flying, you know. But after five beers, it was all right. Everything all right with the car? Yeah, everything's fine, thanks. I've made myself at home in there. The thing with the steering wheel's a bit of a pain, but... I'll manage. I'd have thought driving on the left would be a lot easier after five beers. Oh, yeah. Damn, you caught me. Where do I hand in my driving license? To me, for example. Hey, Jordan, come on now. I'm completely sober. You wouldn't make things difficult for a fellow policeman now, would you? Like I said, Jack, your boss warned me about you. Oh, boy. What did the old grouch come up with this time? Oh, he thinks a lot of you. But he also said that you're not so hot on following the rules. Nonsense. I love rules. All the better. Because you're in Great Britain now, Jack. You'll respect the law here. All the laws, including the ones that concern driving under the influence. Is that clear? Crystal clear. Okay. Now tell me, what happened to the poor guy? We don't know any more than what's in the report. Perhaps the post-mortem can tell us something, but the pathologist wasn't particularly optimistic. Evidence secured? And checked. All negative thus far. It would appear that he really did just fall down dead. Organ failure. Did he take drugs? Well, cocaine, uppers, sleeping pills. And he was an alcoholic, but no critical blood values. He went to the doctor regularly. The results were all in order. Wow. Almost sounds as though the man was more afraid of flying than me, huh? Indeed. But his consumption patterns are unfortunately not uncommon for a top-ranking politician. I suppose I don't really need to ask if he had enemies. It would be quicker to list his friends. You followed the coverage of the demonstrations over the G8 summit? Sure. Then you've seen a few hundred thousand of his enemies. 
Our first thought was political murder, but we can't find a thing. No weapon, no injuries, no bacteria, no poison. Did he have family? Wife, ex-wife, three children, golden retriever, and a girlfriend, of course, his blonde assistant. She's going to inherit everything, if I'm not mistaken. Oh. And how old is she? Twenty-two. Can't count to five, but looks like Miss Universe. We must be doing something wrong, Jordan. At least we're still alive. I'd like to have a look around in there now. Of course. I've already informed the officers. You have access to the office at any time. Your colleagues from France have also been here, by the way. Took off again yesterday. Are you coming in with me? Sorry, I've got too much to do. We're putting a special commission together. You've got my mobile number. So if you find anything... You'll be the first to know. That's right. So, speak to you soon. Okay, off we go. Swanky box. Admiral Nelson, or someone. Yep, not much gets left behind. Not even of the high and mighty. Now, would anyone notice if I just took a sip? Nice, but not my taste. Hmm, I know this old guy from somewhere. Colonial politician, I think. Well, it's a piece of something. One hell of a boat. Files. An old trooper. A regular wife of Dracula. Gotta be one of Henston's predecessors. Look at this, Henston's organizer. I call it shortening the chain of command. Minister Henston's organizer. I gotta do a bit of research on these entries. Let's see. Shortly before his death, Mr. Henston went out for a meal with a certain Nancy Jenkins. And then on the following day, again with a Laureen Myers. Then he had a meeting with a company called Art Trans in his office. Could be it. A model then, huh? Alibi service? The good minister was very organized. A specialist art shipper? Hmm. Strange. Nancy Jenkins. Hello, Mrs. Jenkins. This is Jack Stern from the International Police. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Do you have a moment for me? International who? International Police. I'm investigating the death of the minister James Henston. I assume you've heard about that. Hmm. Well, I never. So he's dead, is he? You don't know anything about it. Listen, Mr. International Thingamajig. My name is Stern. James Henston was a purebred sod and didn't deserve any better. I hope it was a slow and painful death. Oh, we're still working that out. You have to cut him up into little pieces for that. Oh, well, I think something like that will be done. Good. Very good. If you need any help with that... You didn't like Mr. Henston very much? Why'd you go to dinner with him then? Because he paid for it. It's my job. Escort service, you see. Why do you have such a bad opinion of him? He was a pig. Don't you want to ask me if I killed him? No, I don't think so. I... I'm sorry if I put you in an awkward position. Not at all. It was a pleasure. Uh, yeah. 
Good. So then, uh, thank you very much for now. Myers? Hi, Mrs. Myers. This is Jack Stern from the International Police. International Police? Well, I never. So word of mouth does work. What do you mean? Wait a minute. What's this about, please? I have a few questions about the death of James Henston. Oh, I, I see, yes. That was a terrible thing. I was out for a meal with him just the day before he died. That's exactly why I'm calling. What was the purpose of your date? Business. Contract extension. Mr. Henson was a customer of your service? For many years. He had a bit of a difficult marriage. I can imagine. So you supplied him with the fitting alibis for his marital difficulties. Exactly. Have you got a problem with that? Not at all. Did Mr. Henson have any other difficulties, apart from his marriage? <laughs> well, with a job like his, you always have a lot of difficulties. He traveled a lot, and not all of his destinations were meant to be public knowledge. Did you always know where he was going when he needed an alibi? No. We don't ask our customers questions. We give them answers. Where were you when Mr. Henson died? You're asking for my alibi? I'm quite sure you have one. I've got 20. One's enough for me. I was working out a contract with a high-ranking American policeman. International police. Would you like to know his name? Perhaps I better not. I thought not. Good. Well, thanks a lot for now. Nothing at all, Mr. Stern. And, uh, if you ever need an alibi... I know. Have a nice day. Oh, Trans Limited. Jeff Travis speaking. Hi, Mr. Travis. Jack Stern here from the International Police. I have a question about one of your customers, James Henston. Oh, yes. The minister. He just died, didn't he? That's right. There's a note in his diary suggesting he had an appointment with you the day before his death. One moment. Uh, let me just check. Yes, that's right. His ministry had loaned out a picture for a special exhibition in the London Modern. We brought it back on that day to his office, if I'm not mistaken. Uh-huh. Now, which picture was it? The Portrait of Cecil Rhodes by William James Thurber. How many people did you send? Two, like always. What are their names? I can't tell you exactly. I haven't received all of the papers yet. They're still in the post. But you could ask at the museum. Our people have to sign transport documents there. Okay, I'll do that. Thanks for now. Goodbye. Hmm, G8 Summit. That was sure something. Wasn't that in DC? It all went off. National Guard and everything. I'll take a closer look at it on the web. Interesting. Okay, about time we got out to see some people. I'll speak to Henson's widow tomorrow, and with his assistant. Let's see how she's coping with her new wealth. And I still have to get to the museum, what with this art shipper and all. Better do that now, before they close. <laughs>